What's up guys? I'm Shannon Aikow, Counts Customs. Check out Bill's Cool Projects on YouTube. Take it easy. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today doing some more work. We're back on the, the Volkswagen thing again. And in today's video, I'm going to cover uh, the bumper brackets that attach to the fenders, restoring the fenders, and restoring the factory running boards, which I've been told are pretty rare. It's uh, really hot here in Colorado. Uh, we've been hitting the 100 mark um, for, for a number of days now, so uh, very hot in a shop. I don't have air conditioning in any, any of the shops, which we really don't need in Colorado, but uh, after this summer, this last couple weeks and, and months. But uh, we haven't had rain since, when was it, July 4th? Uh, was the last time we had rain and today's like august 23rd and uh, we're getting all the smoke from california we also have our own forest fires going on so as you can see the volkswagen thing's got its new wheels its new shoes on and down on the ground and uh, a lot of progress let's get to it and show you what led up to this point so i got the doors done and now uh working on the back fenders and uh, I've got a couple dings in the fenders that I need to take out. One's like dimpled in right here, a little bit up there. But if you have one of these old Volkswagens, they put this undercoating in here and just sprayed it in super thick. And when it cracks, it gets some impact, like you see some of the cracking right there. The water gets behind there and then starts the fenders to rust. But fortunately, I'm in pretty good shape on this one. But to take it off, you have to heat it with a torch. And I use uh, one of these handheld uh, torches and then, um, you know, just take it. So I can do this one hand in here. Just heat it up really good. And then take your knife and, um, you know, it comes off pretty, pretty good once you heat it up. So anyway, just a little, little tip and trick here, but I'll get this dollied out and then get a coat of primer on it. And uh, it's gonna be about the last of the body work. All right, boy, that was a fun project. Scraping all that undercoating off. Left with a pile here. So uh, anyway, on to dolling. Fender's all dollied out and uh, wire brush down, get all the loose rust off. And uh, the next thing that I do is treat that rust with a converter. And I use Coro Seal, if you can see that or not, rust converting metal primer. Buy it on Amazon. Also, there's, uh, I guess, another brand called Ultra. But what it's going to do is react, and you can see how it's turning the rust black, and that becomes a paintable surface. So I just dump a little bit into a uh, leftover hot and sour soup Chinese container from the meal we had a few nights ago and just a cheap disposable paintbrush from Lowe's and all you do is you just brush it on and let it soak into the grooves and you could take an air hose to blow it into the cracks I learned that trick the other day watching somebody's YouTube but uh, let's get it all over there and just let it sit for uh, probably a couple hours and uh, all that rust will never happen again all right, the Cora Seal uh, rust converter's been sitting. You can just see how it turns the rust black. Um, and then after it's dry, I can give it just light sanding and then uh, go ahead with my acid etching primer. And uh, I am good to go. So the next thing I need to do is uh, clean out the bolt holes for the fenders. I got the fenders pretty clean here. Uh, I'm gonna wait to mount them before I do final body work on them. It'd be easier to hold them uh, in place. But when you remove a Volkswagen fender, Beetle, Thing, Carmen Ghia, actually not a Carmen Ghia because those fenders are welded on, but uh, Fastbacks, those are welded on too, so I guess it's the thing or the beetle um, that have removable fenders. So, but uh, when you take the fender bolts out, these are eight millimeter bolts. Uh, one of three things: either it's going to come out real nice in the hole, uh, 
like right there. Um, it's going to break off like that one. Or, as you probably saw in my previous video, I had to basically reconstruct this whole steel corner here in the quarter panel. So now I don't have a hole. So what do I do there? So what I'm going to do is holes that are good and the bolts actually came out is I have an eight millimeter tap. Uh, you can see it right there. Got it on Amazon along with the, uh, I think it's a 6.75 millimeter uh, drill bit. It comes with it in the kit and I'll put the link in the description from Amazon where I got it from. But eight millimeter is what all the fender bolts are. So I'm going to take and clean out the holes with a little bit of oil on this tap or run them in and get the holes nice and clean. For this one, I found best, there's no way I'm going to get this out. I'll, I'll maybe try it with a pair of vice grips on there, uh, see if it comes out. But if not, what I'll do is uh, use my cutoff wheel, cut it flat, and I'll actually drill a hole in it. For down here, what I'm going to do is drill a 7 16 inch hole, and I'm going to use riv nuts. And here's a whole bag, pretty cheap, and I'll show you how these work. All right. So this is the rib nut. You get a close-up view of it right here. And you can probably see that it kind of looks like a hat. And drill a 7 16 inch hole. It's going to go into the hole. And then I have this tool here that wasn't very much uh, on Amazon. And again, I'll put the link on and try to do this one-handed here by holding the camera. Screw that on the end. place it in the hole, and then squeeze down on the handles. And what it's gonna do is bulge uh, the end of that rivet uh, on the back of it and the front and pinch it right in the middle, and I'll have a nice clean eight millimeter thread. So let's get to it. side is all done. Holes cleaned out. Got that stud out that was snapped off. Didn't have to drill it. Got my rib nut in and this side is done. Now time for the driver's side. Fenders on both sides on the thing. So some progress here. Had to do some body work on them and stuff. Uh, minor dents but uh, anyway they're looking good. But uh, today's project is going to be tweaking this bumper. Um, again when I got the thing the engine was stolen out of it they had torched the cross member so I made a bolt in type cross member and they just took a cutting torch torched it out didn't have a bumper on it that was gone so I got the bumper out of uh, thingparts.com uh, New York they hooked me up uh, but the bumper you know all the all the things that I've seen too the bumpers don't fit quite right and I want to make this accurate so um, have a challenge on the one side. This is the bracket that goes up that's normally welded on here and it was about a half inch too high so I need to chop this off, put the bracket down underneath here and then re-weld it in the correct position um, because I want this level, um, this step I guess you'd call it. And then on the other side, the challenge I have is and I guess all the things are like this. I'm out about a half inch too far um, from the fender on this side. So, so what I'm going to do is uh, next I'm going to cut this off, this uh, face step that goes onto the main bumper, chop it off and move it over a half an inch and re-weld it back on. So that's today's project, those two things.
Well, that took about an hour to do, but uh, looking good. Nice and flush with a fender now. So right in here, took it in about five eighths of an inch. Tucked it in, just like chip foos would do. Now I need to tackle the bracket on this side and uh, get this fitted proper. tucking in the bumper edges a bit I have these two original holes here which aren't going to line up and I'm going to redrill them in the front here but I need to plug up these holes so you could take a washer and stick it to the back but I like using these are from Harbor Freight these are copper paddles and I have a couple curved ones came with it and a real nice handle so what I'm going to do is back that up because if I weld inside here I'll go around in a circular pattern the weld won't stick to the copper, but it'll leave me this plug filled up with, with molten steel. So, so let's clamp it in place. Get my welder going here, get my helmet on. So I'm going to take my MIG welder and I'm going to start around the outside inner edge so I don't blow out this section over here. And I'm going to go around in a circular pattern, spiral around until I get to the middle and then stop. So let's give this a shot. Got my ground connected. Ready to go. filled in can't even see where they were at the we'll walk around looking good or as Gary Coleman used to say on different strokes looking good Willis Gary Coleman used to live down the, near me here in Colorado and he was a real son man that looks so much better tucked in even just a, about a half inch below the outside edge of the fender got everything squared away lowered that bracket down you can't even tell i lowered it after i do the body work on it so that was about two-thirds of a day's work to get that done but uh that is the last of the rough body work now it's just finishing uh doing block sanding and uh get that done and uh push it out spin it around pressure wash underneath and i'm ready for the mechanicals pull the pedals seal the floor put the disc brake conversion on the front, new brake lines, pull the transmission out, rebuild it, and uh, put everything back together again, and uh, won't be long I'll be driving this thing. I originally planned on <clears throat> drilling out the uh, running board bolts uh, that broke off. Um, you see one right there. Uh, right there, one broke off. And what I found out is these are Allen bolts that were hardened steel. There's no way I can run a drill bit up into them to drill them out. So, next best thing is I moved aft on the 
bottom of the rocker panel here.